Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I have really, really crazy and exciting news. And if you couldn't get it from my title already, I quit my job so that I could travel full time. <laughs> and it was honestly probably one of the hardest decisions I've ever made in my life because I wasn't ready to leave and I'm still not ready to leave. I honestly don't really know what I'm going to be doing but I knew that it was right in my heart for me to do so. So, I know this is a super long video and I don't expect you to watch the whole thing, but I literally explain in very micro detail why I decided to quit my job. So if you watch the whole entire video or read my whole entire blog post, you're a trooper. And if not, that is totally fine. I literally appreciate you anyways. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this is like not scripted at all whatsoever. So I'm just kind of like talking. <laughs> okay. I hope you enjoy my video. <laughs> oh my goodness. I did not expect this to happen so soon, but it's happening y'all. I gave him my two week notice on November 1st, 2019. My last day ever in corporate America will be on November 15th, and all I could say is I cannot believe that I did it. I've been working a job ever since I was 16 years old, and it's so weird to think that I'm not going to be committed to physically go into an office ever again. If you knew me throughout my college career, I used to be obsessed and crazy about landing an internship or a job every single season. No joke, ask anybody. I was obsessed with building my resume and I worked my butt off to make sure that I was working up to a corporate standards. So the fact that I've been able to leave my job still boggles my mind. Proof, feel free to stalk my LinkedIn. But if anyone needs help on resume building or looking for a job within marketing or human resource management, feel free to reach out to me. I've got tons and tons of referrals and I'd like to confidently say that I've also mastered resume building, landing internships and jobs, and finessing interviews. So throughout my college career, I'm pretty sure that I've applied to at least 200 plus internships freshman to junior year, and I've applied to another 200 plus full-time jobs my senior year. I wish I was kidding, but I'm not. <laughs> It wasn't even about making money back then, but I was obsessed with learning and wanting to be kept busy all the freaking time. I've been working full time in corporate for the last 2.5 years and all I could say is how freaking blessed I am to have had the opportunity to work at three amazing companies since graduating at Rutgers University in May 2017. Ever since I was in grade school, I always knew I was going to work within sales and marketing. I'm not sure how or why I knew it, but it just felt right in my gut. When I got into college, I never took a marketing class because the marketing major was under the Rutgers Business School, which I got rejected to. So I took the easy way out and double majored in economics and human resource management with a minor in labor studies in order for me to land a marketing-like job once I graduated from college. And it worked because every single job I got out of college was within sales and marketing. So now you're probably wondering why I decided to quit my job if I worked so hard to land my jobs in the first place. Well, there are a couple reasons why and some of them that I never thought would have been contributing reasons for. So here are the four reasons why I decided to quit my job. The first reason is because I have a dying obsession to travel the world. If you've been following me this past year, I've been obsessed with traveling and creating content around travel. I purposely go out of my way to different cities or New York City every weekend I'm home just to explore the city, be on the road, and take pictures of as many sunrises and sunsets as I can. I lose sleep to try to attempt and capture the sunrise even though I fail to do so so many times. I seriously need to find a good, reliable app that pinpoints optimal areas to capture the sun wherever I am around the globe. I also love, love, love writing reviews about certain cities, the best coffee shops, and having the opportunity to shoot with some of the most talented photographers all around the world. I also love being one with nature. 
pure joy of being around natural landscapes and not being around technology all the time gets me and I don't think I will ever, ever, ever get enough of it. And a lot of people have been asking why I don't travel internationally as often. And there are a few reasons why I don't right now. For one, ever since April of 2019, I've been extremely strict with my time and my expenses. I stopped meeting up with people as I normally would. I stopped going out every weekend and started focusing more on building myself. If you've known me since high school, I used to go out twice a week, every week, from when I was 18 to 24 years old. Now that's a lot of time, going out, forgetting probably half the nights and just being wasted. <laughs> But overall, I had to make this sacrifice and this type of sacrifice was probably one of the hardest things that I've honestly ever had to do, mainly because I was losing touch with so many people. And since I'm a total extrovert, it was hard adjusting to its total solitude type of lifestyle. But I limited myself because I was desperate for my blog to work out. Every time I came back from an international trip, I pretty much always wanted a vacation from my trip to adjust to the time difference, but end up taking longer breaks from it and would lose my momentum. And I'm not saying there's anything bad about international trips because I'd love to do that more often. So because I was losing so much time on working on my side hustles, I was very strict on myself for not traveling far distances in order to preserve my energy and focus on building up my travel blog in order to showcase destinations, provide tips in countries and cities, and obviously to try to convince others to travel more often. The second reason why I decided to quit my job is that even though I loved my job so much, the job itself was mentally taxing. I will be forever grateful for wanting to learn marketing every single day. I am always reading up on what's new in the industry, listening to marketing podcasts, and testing out marketing content across my social channels. But even though I feed a ton of marketing information to myself every single day, that doesn't mean that I will excel in all areas of it. Understanding and executing certain areas of marketing is actually very difficult for me and quite frankly, I fail to put it into action. I have experience in many areas of marketing and at my last job, I focused on paid search. I got into paid search because while I was working at my previous employer, I got heavily into e-commerce on the side. I used to sell on Amazon FBA also known as Fulfillment by Amazon, and attempted to build an Amazon empire for hours outside of work. <laughs> to put it into perspective, I pretty much focused on FBA just as much time as I currently focus on my blog today. But the one thing that I had a really hard time doing was learning how to understand my advertising reports. And if you're familiar with the lingo, my ACoS was averaging more than 50% and that is absolutely terrible. I was losing money by the day and I just couldn't understand the anatomy of an ad and how to create successful campaigns that worked. So I told myself that if I could finish a full-time job that could teach me how to read and understand all I need to know about the advertising world, I would resign in a heartbeat. So I applied to exactly four different paid search positions and I got a call from Education Dynamics while hiking Potato Chip Rock in San Diego. Somehow, I nailed the interview during the hike, went in for an in-person interview, and when I came back, I got an offer shortly afterwards. Thinking back, it was so crazy to think how quickly everything happened, but that's pretty much how I started off my paid search journey. So now I'm in the field that I wanted to be in, but out of all the 15 plus employers that I've ever worked for in my life, this was the first time that I was not excelling at a job and it ate me up alive. Not because I was concerned about performing well, but because I wasn't contributing. I did my absolute best to try to understand the material and went out of my way to find sources that would help me get the click 
No pun intended at all. But after a few months of doing this, I was running out of ammo, stressing out at work all the time, and I was simply embarrassed to even show up at work because I just wasn't understanding the material. When I first started my job, I was my bubbly, confident self and was totally certain that I was able to get over this hurdle. But after five, six, seven months passed where I should have gotten it by now, I just wasn't. And I was so embarrassed that I stopped talking and cracking jokes as much as I used to and I started living in my head. I was getting mentally taxed by the day because I was simply just not getting better. And on top of the seven plus hours I contribute to my blog outside of work, I was stressing my mind and body to the absolute max every single day. I used to have such clear skin, but I started breaking out like no other. It was getting very hard for me to start digesting my food and I was losing sleep every single day. I was so desperate to be good at paid search that I was reading articles and watching YouTube videos online, going into the office on weekends and took the time to get Google Ads certified. I took a digital marketing course at Noble Desktop in New York City and I even reached out to paid search experts when visiting Austin, Texas. And even though I did all of this to even be mildly good at paid search, I just wasn't getting it and meeting expectations. So after realizing that paid search was just not the right fit for me, I decided that I needed to call it quits. I was trying to force myself to be good at something that I wasn't. So after taking a lot of time to think about it, I had to make the decision to just let it go. I realized that I needed to focus my energy on something that I could excel at and be really, really good at. And from this moment on, I gave them my two week notice on November 1st, 2019. And my last day at Education Dynamics is going to be on November 15, 2019. This sucks because I love my team so much. We get along so, so well, and I'm going to miss the ridiculous conversations we all have about the weirdest things ever. <laughs> I'm gonna miss Jason trolling me that there was a ghost hacking into my computer for weeks. I'm going to miss hearing Christy munch on chips at nine in the morning and drink her fifth cup of tea by noon. I'm going to miss Christina's delicious cooking and hospitality in and out of work. I'm going to miss Teresa's random stories about Chinese gangs and hearing her speak Korean better than I ever can. <laughs> I'm going to miss Yuchen's poop stories and her heart for creating the best team that I could have ever had the pleasure of being a part of. And even though I'm not going to be physically there anymore, guys, I promise that I'll always be there in spirit. I love you guys so much. And I just want to thank you all for making my last corporate experience my best and my last. At Education Dynamics, I've learned more about paid search, building campaigns, website design, and overall optimizations more than I could ever possibly have imagined. I wholeheartedly value all the time, energy, and effort my boss put into me during my time there. And when I say hours, I literally mean <laughs> hours. My boss was and still is the best boss I could have ever asked for. I learned paid search from the absolute best and if you ever want to pursue paid search as a job, seriously let me know. I'm not even trying to be biased but I would not have wanted to learn paid search from anyone else. She breaks down advertising in the most simplest forms and provides the best examples on the spot. Sometimes I've realized why she isn't making courses to teach people online. But if your company is looking into hiring someone to run an ad for you, this lady right here is wicked and will make you more money than you could ever imagine. I was averaging five hours of sleep per day, even on the weekends, working on my side hustles for about an hour of my commute to and from work, and working the hour throughout lunch. Hence why I never ate with my tea. I was so desperate. And even though I don't monetize on my blog at the moment, I've been so obsessed with sharing. And I know and trust myself that if I have the luxury of contributing the additional 12 hours that I put into my nine to five desk job across my social channels, 
Monetizing my blog might come sooner than I think. I hit my end of the year financial savings goal two weeks ago, so I guess timing oddly happened at a perfect time. So now, how am I going to be financially supporting myself in the meantime? I have no idea, but I am looking across many creative outlets to potentially make money. So if anyone has any suggestions, please leave a comment below or personally message me. Any additional help would be much appreciated. And the fourth and last reason why I decided to quit my job is because I finally got over my insecurities and the false lies living deep within me. If you've been following my travel journey this past year, I sincerely want to thank you for keeping up with me. Depending on the current situation in my life, my posts and messages have been ranging from happy-go-lucky me to depressing ass posts. So if you've kept up with me, I genuinely appreciate you so much because I even get annoyed trying to keep up with myself. But the reason why I got into sharing as much as I do on social media is because I needed an outlet to express my inner emotions and feelings. I was so desperate and I was going through my first and hopefully last breakup and the biggest heartache of my life. I was desperate to find an outlet to liberate my thoughts since I've never felt my heart try to kill me alive so badly. And even though I had full support of all my friends and family, for some reason I just didn't want to socialize and I shut down every single day. The breakup happened exactly a year ago and it sucked because it was around the holiday season. Everyone was busy spending time with their family and I didn't really want to socialize with anyone, not even my own family members. 2019 was the first year that I've ever stayed at home during New Year's and was still trying to figure out how to handle my emotions. I still remember trucking down to Starbucks on Christmas day because I had so much on my mind to write and want to share about. And the more and more I kept on writing and sharing, the more I realized how much fun it was. Having the ability to share my larger message with the world and reaching out to people I never thought was within my capacity pushed me harder than I've ever pushed myself before. People started reaching out to me from countries that I've never even heard of, thanking me for the value they've received from my posts. Friends that I thought I was never ever going to ever talk to again started reaching out to me, telling me how much they respected my hustle and how much I want to make them to travel more often. And the more and more I realized how many hearts I was capable of touching, I was getting hooked. And the fact that I am now able to reach over 7,500 plus people in this world boggles my mind. I'm not the one to brag either, but 5,000 plus followers on Instagram, 2,000 plus friends on Facebook, 250 plus subscribers on YouTube, 250 plus followers on Twitter and all the traffic that comes onto my site from organic traffic. So now you're probably asking, now that you have your following based, where do your insecurities come from? And if you've noticed the pattern, I write based off emotion, which can be a good or a bad thing. I haven't taken a writing class since I was 19 years old, which isn't necessary, but never thought I was ever good at writing. I spill whatever's on my mind, structure it into a post and share it. And although I'm constantly learning about copywriting and alternative writing structures, I was never confident enough to believe that I can monetize and make a living from my writing abilities. I genuinely never thought I was good enough to even reach out to companies to write blog posts for them in exchange for monetary value. And even though the reason why I write is not for money, that is what will allow me to survive to travel the world. I didn't realize my deep hidden insecurities in me until my friends yanked it out of me during our last night out in Austin, Texas. Brian, Eric, and Fonz, I give it to you guys. Thank you guys for pulling out and destroying the deepest, darkest lie living within me. Thank you guys for encouraging me to move on beyond my past and supporting me to continue to pursue my passion. Thank you guys for roasting me and continuously encouraging me to shine and to never forget my why, no matter what the circumstance may be. And although I don't have a backbone or any type of reliance of constant financial income coming in, for some reason, I am not anxious about it at all. It's a bit odd, but maybe it will hit me later on. I don't plan on pulling out of my savings for a few months, so we'll see how long this goes. 
But all I do know is that God is by my side and he will and has continuously been protecting me throughout my walk. And some of you guys have been asking me how you could support. Reading my blog posts and watching my YouTube videos is more support than I could ever ask for. Alternatively, I'm actually a bit guilty of doing this, but I also created a GoFundMe page if you ever feel like financially supporting someone like me. I know money is a sensitive topic and it's tight for a lot of you guys, so I do appreciate all the support from the bottom of my heart. Keep in mind that GoFundMe takes 2.9% of the total transaction and 30 cents per donation as well. So Venmo works too in the comment section below. Now that I'm realizing that I have all the time in the world to work on my passion projects, I am mentally preparing myself to work more than I did at my nine to five job. On the weekends, I'll usually go to a coffee shop and work from 10 a.m. to closing. That's anywhere between 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. So that's already a 12 hour work day for me to catch up on all my blog posts and videos that I need to work on. Remember when I was talking about being desperate to find time? I found it. So if I'm consistent with my work and focus on completing at least one task per day, I should be able to catch up with my backlog in about two to three weeks. And since there is still so much content I want to grab from New Jersey and New York, I'm sure that I'll be good with keeping myself busy until the end of the year. And of course, if I find any cheap flights around the world in between, I'll purchase them in a heartbeat. Obviously working up to this goal, I want to find ways to rack up as many points as I possibly can so I could use them towards travel. So if anyone is gracious enough to share their strategies, please leave a comment below or personally message me. Appreciate all the help. And now where is my next destination? Interestingly enough, I have been meeting people online or at conferences that live in the Bay Area. I've been to SoCal a bunch of times but never to the Bay. A lot of my friends moved up there this year and I still have some family there so I'm honestly just thinking of buying a one-way ticket to San Francisco, bringing my passport along with me just in case I want to go international and couch surf for as long as they let me. Social media raves about Los Angeles and San Francisco all the time but there is still so much more I want to do outside of the city, which I am dying to do. The amount of national parks and photography spots that I'm trying to go to makes me believe that I can camp out in cars for a solid month and be as happy as I can. I am just ready to explore. So if anyone from the Bay Area is down to do some road trips on the West Coast, please let me know. I am dying to catch sunrises and sunsets behind beautiful mountains and experience 100 degrees weather outside in the desert. All in all, I just wanted to let you guys know how much I love you guys. I cannot thank you guys enough for keeping up with me across my social media journey this past year. It's been a solid year of producing content and building up my biggest asset, my blog. Crazy to see how quickly time flies. I honestly, again, cannot thank you guys enough. You guys drive and push me to want to create more every single day and I owe it all up to you. Last but not least, I want to give a big thank you and a big shout out to my loving supporting family. Because for the longest time, my parents never knew why I used to set my alarm on at 7 in the morning and work so hard on Saturday. They noticed that I stopped going out and started coming home at ridiculous hours from work. They started getting suspicious when I started breaking out so much. So after telling them how much time and stress I kind of put into building up my social channels, they stopped questioning me and just started letting me do. And just a few weeks ago, my heart melted because my mom told me that she ran out of YouTube videos on my channel that she could give a thumbs up for. Don't worry, mom. I'm in the works of making more videos so that you can give me more likes. So after my parents noticed how hard I was working for months, I finally told them that I wanted to drop everything and travel full time. And what shocked me was that they were not totally opposed to it, which honestly freaked me out in the beginning. And knowing my mom, she would have opposed this idea for my life. But because I proved to my parents how hard I worked to pursue my passion projects every single day, they have gained my trust. It's a blessing because my mom straight up told me that she's not worried about me at all because she has me covered in her prayers and my dad told me that whatever happens to me in the world, that I could always fall back home in Jersey. And this is all I've ever, ever wanted and asked for. Full support from my parents. I have never wanted to work so hard for somebody else. I owe it up to you guys. Thank you guys. I love you guys both so much. 
And as for my siblings, Oni. Thank you for always listening to my rants, correcting and teaching me concepts, and putting things into perspective. You are the best older sister I could have ever asked for. You think I'm a hustler? My big sis hustles harder and more efficiently than me and is the definition of a go-getter. Thank you for all your love and support, keeping me sane and being the voice and ears I've always been searching for. Isaac, I am so, so proud of you for stepping out of your old lazy habits that used to drive me insane. I'm so happy that you set yourself financial goals, bought yourself a Sony A7 before me for the money you saved up from working at Fly Nyon because you wanted to get into automotive photography. I'm so proud of you for being on the route of finishing up school a semester early to start your post-college life earlier than others. Not a lot of people can do that your age. Isaiah, I am so relieved that you started undergrad and you are slowly starting to find yourself in school. You really needed to leave the house and I'm so freaking happy. <laughs> I laughed so hard when you called me your first week of school asking if you should buy silver or black earrings. You freaking rebel. There's a lot that you're going to learn in college. So just do me one favor and just always be open-minded. Just stop being so logical all the time because it's annoying. <laughs> but I still think black looks better on you. And to Annie, my favorite cousin in the whole entire world, I honestly don't know how to express how, how grateful I am to have you in my life and the pleasure of calling you my blood. You have been my constant throughout it all. You honestly keep me sane and you always know the right things to say when I need to hear it. I am also so proud of you for getting so far and have embarked your real estate career in North Carolina. You're already killing the game and I cannot wait to see you in the top 100 Forbes women soon. So any of y'all, if you need a new house or need to rent a house in North Carolina, hit my cousin up. And to all my supportive and loving friends, thank you guys so much. I genuinely couldn't have done it without you guys. And thank you so much for believing in me. No matter how many times y'all have asked me to come out and I have just said no. So moving onward. I know this video and this blog post have been freaking long and I can't believe you made it this far. <laughs> You're crazy because this post and this video might as well have been published as a book. But if you did get it to the end, I honestly thank you for listening to my why. You are truly a trooper. Now, I hope you understand my why and all of the reasons as to why I decided to quit my job. I hope you got something out of this post and that I've inspired you to do something new and different with your life. I also want to remind you that you are beautifully and wonderfully made and that you have a crazy, crazy amount of talent living deep within you. You just gotta do a little bit of soul searching and break out of your comfort zone to let your creativity shine. I support your journey and decision in whatever you do as long as you know that in your gut that you've made the right choice. And if I've convinced you to travel a little bit more often, you have made me the happiest girl in the world. Because remember that you only have one life and one world. Happy traveling, y'all. I love you guys so much. Thanks. Bye. And every song.